All right, so today I want to show you a way to treat your snake mites that's 100% safe for your snake. And I actually had a comment under one of my videos and said, hey, you can actually treat snake mites by using mites, a different type of mite that's actually a predator mite that only feeds on snake mites. I thought that was pretty clever. It was actually the first time I've ever heard of it. And I started looking around the internet and sure enough, you can actually buy mites for your snakes that only eat snake mites. And they don't bother your snakes. They don't bother people at all. As a matter of fact, they actually feed on the mites and then as soon as all the mites are gone, they actually die out because their food source, the only food source they have is the snake mites. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to jump over the internet and I want to show you what a snake mite is, some of the problems in treating snake mites, and I want to show you this new way that you can actually treat your snake for snake mites. All right, so I'm gonna jump over here on the internet and I wanna start on morphmarket.com. And the first thing I wanna look at is the banana ball python. Let me tell you, if you actually buy a banana or a coral glow, essentially there a lot of people consider them the same gene, you can actually be tricked into thinking that you have mites, especially if you buy a hatchling. I actually bought, just this year, I bought a hatchling, a banana inchy clown, which has the banana gene in it. And when I first got the snake, it had no spots at all on it. And when the, when the banana actually starts aging and maturing it develops a lot of spots and it really depends on what genes are in your snake sometimes you can actually mix banana with certain genes that have pretty much eliminates all the spots but with certain other genes you can actually enhance the number of spots and if you actually look at this the first thing you're thinking is oh my I'm, I think I might have some snake mites because there's all these little black spots all over my snake and it can kind of trick you with the banana as a matter of fact if you actually have have a dark morph like even like a normal ball python sometimes the snakes are so dark that it's actually almost impossible to see the really dark mites unless you actually see one crawling across the snake it's really easy to see them if you actually have an all white snake like a blue eyed leucistic or something like that but most of these spots are actually bigger than a snake mite if you actually look at some of the really tiny spots on the snake i say snake mites are super tiny almost like little tiny pin like almost the size of the head of a pin as far as the size of the snake mite and it's kind of, it's kind of deceiving if you actually have snake mites on your snake because essentially what they do is they burrow in between the scales and if you actually try to rub them off you actually can't rub them off of the snake so a lot of times you think this isn't a this isn't a snake mite this is just a little spot on my snake which some snakes can actually have like little freckles and stuff but when that snake mite actually moves to another spot then you know for sure you actually actually have snake mites and kind of one of the ways you can actually tell if you have snake mites is I actually pulled this picture up over here you can actually take the snake remove all the substrate and put them on something white like a towel or a paper towel and you can see in this example what essentially what happens is a lot of the mites will leave the snake and start crawling all over the place all over the tub especially underneath the towel or the paper towel if you actually look underneath usually you see quite a bit more than you actually see here there's like <laughs> I actually had a mite infection in my collection and there are so many mites I could not believe it and they grow exponentially you know it's like, it seems like you'll have a couple mites here and there and then a couple weeks later you'll just have this explosion where you have like this picture even more than this all over the place and the other problem with mites is they actually crawl not only in the tub and on the snake but they'll crawl on the rack and on the floor and across the room and it's really difficult to get rid of them because if you actually treat the snake and the sub straight and everything in the tub even the rack and you think all right I'm done with this I finally cured it what essentially what happens is they come from across the room and they go back up the rack and into the snake tub and reinfect your snake and it takes a long time in some cases to actually treat for snake mites so if you actually have snake mites one of the telltale signs is you actually get these little sores on your snake and sometimes you'll see little black spots that you really can't rub off sometimes you'll actually see the mites crawling across the snake that is a really bad sign that you probably have mites and sometimes you'll actually see little sores on your snake like this and essentially what happens is the snake mite burrows in between the scales and you can't get them off but then after they they actually suck the blood of the snake and when they actually leave the scales they leave behind these little tiny sores that you'll see on the snake. I actually just pulled this picture 
picture up on the internet and just this is like the perfect example especially if you have a white snake sometimes you'll see a lot of sores and when I had a lot of mites let me tell you my whole snake was covered in sores all over the place and you definitely want to get rid of your snake mites so here is the chemical that I actually use to get rid of my snake mites. This is called reptile spray, and this is probably the safest chemical treatment that you can use to get rid of your snake mites. As a matter of fact, this is the only one that I know of that you can apply directly on your snake. And as a matter of fact, I had that white snake that was completely covered in all these little black spots, and I took reptile spray and I wetted a paper towel and I wiped down my snake, and all these mites came out and it just started crawling all over my snake. It was like kind of Freaky that I had so many little mites crawling all on my snake and the, the problem with this is if you actually take reptile spray and you treat your snake every day day after day you can actually I think you can kill your snake I got to the point where my snake was almost totally unresponsive for from using it too many days in a row and you should always use always read the directions on these medications I think it says don't treat more than every four or five days or something like that I had a snake that was so bad I was treating treating every day for like three days in a row and that was not good for that snake. You have to be really careful with some of these chemicals. But I say as far as something you can actually wet a paper towel and you can wipe everything down with this. It kills the eggs and the mites on contact with this reptile spray. So you can actually wipe down the racks and the tubs and even the snake once in a while and it works wonders to actually get rid of them. I think it took me like two months to finally get rid of my mites and it was only when I started vacuuming vacuuming the floor and cleaning all around the room that I finally got rid of them because they'll crawl across the room and then they'll come back into your snakes which is really problematic. So here is another one you can actually use Provenamide and I would say you can use Provenamide with extreme caution. I've seen a lot of people in a lot of reptile forums saying they use Provenamide on their snakes and they actually killed the snake. And the problem is, is with a lot of these you have to read the directions to a T. You have to make sure that you're reading them properly. As a matter of fact, if you take Provenamide and spray it directly on your snake, I'd say in most cases you're actually going to kill your snake. You definitely don't want Prevenamide to be sprayed directly on your snake. And this stuff always kind of scared me. As a matter of fact, even after I get rid of my mites, I was kind of researching more and more into my mite problem a few months later. And I saw this YouTube video from this big breeder and he had all these snakes, like a warehouse full of snakes. He's like, oh yeah, yeah, getting mite rid of mites is real easy. All you do is open up the tub, take out the snake, take out the water, and then you take Prevenamide and just briefly spray the substrate, just really gently, really quick. And then you let it dry for, I think you let it dry for like five or 10 minutes, then put the snake back and the water back, and then it killed all the mites. And that's one way to do it. And you should always use this on your substrate and let it completely dry before you put your snake back into your enclosure. But pretty much with any of these chemicals, it can be really dangerous if you improperly use them with your snakes. So here is another option. I actually came over here and found this website from a reference down in the comments section. This is actually the Taurus Snake Mite Control. You actually kill mites by using predatory mites, which is a really clever idea. As a matter of fact, I came over here to the product page and here it is. It just looks like it's a little shaker and you just kind of shake it right in your snake tub and you actually have the snake mites right in you know you put these predator mites in the predator mites actually kill the snake mites and the problem is is they actually have different sizes here and this is one of the major problems of this product right here is this is only in the UK as far as I can tell it's not here in the United States yet and it looks like a brand new product now I'm hoping this actually catches on and migrates over here to the United States I'm really excited about this product. This is like a breakthrough. And one of the things is, is, you know, on a large scale, it's pretty expensive. So if you look kind of at the smallest size, it is uh, 1850 but if you convert that to US dollars, you multiply by 1.25. So it's like 25% more expensive than these numbers in US dollars. And if you actually look at the large, 
the extra large and the extra extra large is all the way up to 120 uh, plus you know times 1.25 so you're looking at quite a bit of money and this actually does 50 tubs so if you got to the point where you had a whole room of like 150 tubs it would actually be three times this times 1.25 which would be really expensive although you know if you're thinking about trying to treat your whole collection with 100 percent safety in your snakes you know if i actually lost just one of my snakes it'd probably be worth you know i'd probably lose more money than the price of the product over here so sometimes it's kind of tough to actually weigh the pros and cons of using any treatment on any animals especially some really high-end animals if you're breeding snakes but if you actually have just a really small collection or just one snake you can actually just use the smallest size over here as a matter of fact i came over here to uh the amazon uh the uk amazon over here and i found the xl size this is actually a big tub of product didn't actually show this tub over there i was kind of wondering how big the tub would be for the xxl size and it has really good ratings and here is the kicker right here it says no sellers are currently delivering this item to the united states which is a bummer and kind of the tricky part of this is it's actually i guess once they produce this product this product only has a shelf life of about two weeks and then the mites start dying in this container so you have to use them up pretty quick so if it actually got stuck in the mail or stuck in customs or something like that i would think that these products would go bad really quick and that might be kind of the hindrance of actually shipping these over to the United States. It would really be ideal if someone in the United States could figure out how to produce these and distribute them here in the United States. I bet they would be a really good seller. As a matter of fact, I've been thinking about this other product. Take a look at this. This is this is kind of a tangent I'm going to throw in here at the end. This is actually beneficial nematodes. And this is this I actually keep cows and chickens and ducks and a bunch of animals outside in my barnyard. And every year I struggle with a lot of flies and gnats and bugs and everything especially the biting flies that get on my cows and my dogs and everything and I'm always out there spraying and hanging up sticky traps I probably spend hundreds of dollars every year in fly control and I was kind of looking over here as a matter of fact for just $36 I could buy 50 million beneficial nematodes and just kind of seed them all over the property. And these actually, uh, I've actually seen like uh, predators that actually eat fly larvae like a bee. They have a certain type of bee that is harmless to everything and it only eats fly larvae. And you can actually order those to keep your flies down. And I kind of ran into this. It looks like it eats bees and everything. It actually had a whole list of all the different things that it is, you know, the fleas, the flies, the fungus gnats, the Japanese beetles, everything. I thought this was pretty clever. Let me tell you, the predators are the way to go if you want to get into pretty much a non-chemical way to treat your animals and your snakes. All right, so it is time for the question of the day. And Watershirt1 asks, how hard is it to switch a ball python from live to frozen thawed rodents for feeding? And that is a very good question. As a matter of fact, when I first started in ball pythons, I started out feeding frozen thawed rodents, and then I started breeding my own rodents, and I started feeding live for a short amount of time. And it's pretty amazing. You can actually have some ball pythons that are really picky that won't eat for a really long time. You throw a live rat or a live mouse in there, and they'll almost grab it all the time right away. It is like night and day difference between live and frozen thought in a lot of cases. And when I actually started feeding live, I thought, man, this is a really good way to do it. I started feeding all live for a short amount of time until I had one of my snakes actually got hurt pretty bad from trying to you know, overcome the live rat and actually got a really big gash on the side of the snake. And then after that, I started reading that you know live rats can be extremely dangerous when you're feeding them to your snake. And as a matter of fact, if you have a snake that is missing an eye, usually it is damage from feeding live. And after I read that, I was like, I'm never feeding live again. And there's kind of this tricky balance of feeding frozen thawed and live in a lot of cases. So I'd say it's, it's, if you're actually feeding adult ball pythons, I would pretty much at all costs try to go with a fresh killed or a frozen thawed and I would avoid live as much as you possibly can. If you actually do feed live, I'd feed a smaller one that the snake can overcome. And if you're actually hatching out ball python hatchlings, a lot of times they need the 
first few meals to be live mouse hoppers, which are fairly harmless. I've never actually heard of anyone actually hurting their snake from a live mouse hopper, but you want to switch them to a frozen thawed as fast as you can. Usually after about six meals, you can switch over to like a frozen thawed mouse and then transition over to a rat. And if you're actually going back and forth between mice and rats, it's almost the same as going from live to a frozen thawed. They much would rather have a mouse over a rat, but you kind of want to transition them away from mice because there's not really enough protein in a mouse to sustain a ball python. They stay pretty thin if you actually have a mouse. There. It's really hard to get females up to weight to where you can actually breed them if you're feeding mice. And ball pythons are pretty picky in the first place. So if you actually feed one or two mice, sometimes back to back, if they'll take them, usually you can't feed any more than that. Like if you had a king snake or something like that, they'll eat like five or six or seven mice all in a row where a ball python really won't do that. They'll usually eat one, maybe two, and then that is pretty much it. Sometimes they won't eat more than that. And ball pythons could be pretty picky, and it's always better to feed a larger frozen thawed rodent versus a mouse or something that's live. So that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.